So I've been using the Wacom 16, not to be confused with the 16 Pro, for a little over two years now, and I figured I really should talk about why I'm still using it. Remember to check out more videos from different artists, because you'll find we all have certain things we get really picky about, just different opinions overall, so it's good to get a idea and consensus before you make that big purchase. By the way, this video is not sponsored by Wacom, so just had to put that out there. Before we get to the device itself, let's first take a look at your workspace. Is there room for something like this? Would you be better off with something smaller? If not, this is a pretty decent size. They get bigger. I think I've seen a drawing tablet about 27 inches. And you of course could get like a 13.3 inch or something like that if you needed a little more space. I personally had to get a larger desk in order to accommodate this. So just think about those things beforehand. As far as the screen goes, you have yourself a full HD 60 Hertz monitor. It's 1920 by 1080. That's your full HD there. It's not bad for something that big. It's a 16 incher. That's your typical laptop resolution for something about that size. But honestly, if it was a 2K display at QHD, of course, I would love it. That'd be cool. Keep in mind, the more pixel density, the more expensive. Now, talking about the device, I would say it's very good quality. Honestly, it's coming from Wacom, so you, you're paying for that Wacom premium. You could feel the plastic is a good quality. You could kind of feel it also through the matte screen itself. Now, if you've never used a matte screen before, basically you're getting a bit of a texture and it's also diffusing light. So you're not getting as strong of a reflection from the lights in your room and your pen is gliding across it. Not quite like paper, but close enough. I personally use a third party screen protector to put on there because I don't like using up what is on the tablet itself. That's up to you though. Now, the screen is where things start to take a turn, honestly. The color accuracy of the Wacom 16 is 72% NTSC. That's pretty decent. The Cintiq Pro is 90% Adobe. That's a different color space. I don't want to get too far into color space, but essentially you're getting just much more displayable colors on that monitor than you are with the Cintiq 16. So the Pro makes sense. They efficiently named it. Only a professional really has to care about color accuracy. With that being said, you might not need to care at all, but there's a certain threshold where you could tell a monitor is not calibrated. Let's say you have red on one monitor and you have the same color on another monitor and it's like an orange red or even an orange. That means both colors might not be calibrated between monitors. And also it could just mean that monitor just can't display all the colors properly. It can mean a lot of things. I am no pro, but that's something that is possible. So keep that in mind. With that being said though, I personally don't have any real troubles with that. Whenever I finish a drawing, I bring it into my other monitor, which happens to be the gaming monitor. It has better color accuracy for whatever reason, but that's where I do the final touches and adjust the colors. Now, would it be nice if I could just do it all on the tablet itself? Sure, but it's not a deal breaker and it's really not something I think you should worry about. I just had to mention it because there is a big difference between that Pro and, of course, this one. As far as the mount goes, it's essentially non-existent for me. Yeah, it does have little stands you could prop up and kinda have it slanted on the table, but it's not really a significant slant, not the kind I like to use. I like to use maybe about a 45-ish degree angle, maybe a little more. It's just much better for my wrist. Now, it depends how you draw, but 
it's usually a given that most artists do use that angle, and they will have to pay that $80 to do it. Honestly, it is much better to get the stand as well, because the third-party stands you could buy off Amazon, it's honestly just not the same. The reason I say that is because I like having everything just ready to go. If you don't mind putting the stand up and then putting the tablet on there, that's fine. It all depends on your setup. My particular setup, even though I have a big desk, I still need a bigger desk. And essentially I like to grab the tablet, bring it forward, I'm ready to draw. In the other case, I have to put up the stand, which normally that's where my mouse goes. So there's just no room. So I have to move my mouse to the side, put the stand on there, put the tablet on there. Eh, too much effort for me. I want art to be as easy as possible for me because if things are a hassle, it's gonna be a lot harder to do things like, you know, training, figure studies, all those things that you kind of don't want to do, but you should. That's what I'm talking about. So keep that in mind, but you might find the use and you might find the need for that stand later, and perhaps that's why it's not included. Maybe that's a good way to think about it. Now you might be wondering, are there any quick keys on this thing? No, you got nothing. You don't have a dial, you don't have a, you don't have much. And that's exactly how I like it, honestly, because I use my keyboard. That's all the keys I need. If I were to upgrade this device, I would add a dial, honestly, because for some reason, the dial is awesome. A lot of other devices from like XP Pen and stuff have the dial. And it's something I kind of got used to, but it's definitely not required. And I don't judge them for not having one either. That being said though, if you think you need some buttons and you don't have room for a full keyboard, maybe you have to move it out of the way to make room for the tablet, you know, depending on how big your desk is, maybe a gaming keypad will work out for you. Or those cool kind of artist quick keys that you could get off Amazon or whatever. Those are kind of nice, but honestly, it's more bang for your buck just getting a, a cheap gaming keyboard super small and fits your left or your right hand, depending which model you get. Or of course, you could be one of those people that use a Switch Joy-Con. Now, honestly, I use a bit more <laughs> keys than that, but if that's all you need and you have a Switch, Bluetooth that stuff right to your PC and there you go. Now, as far as the stylus goes, it is rather precise. Now, I don't really deal with tilt often, however, the tilt does work rather good. The only gripes with this stylus? Just kidding, I don't have anything wrong with this stylus. I honestly find it to be pretty perfect. Other than how the nibs wear out fast, but what are you going to do about that? I always say, if you have some nice drawing texture surface, the nibs are just part of the sacrifice. So that's just honestly how it is. The nibs aren't too expensive either. They're about a, a dollar a nib and you go through maybe a nib a week. Now here's the big mystery. I mean, not really a mystery, but the parallax is actually pretty bad. At the same time though, because how nice the pen is, and how precise it is? I don't care about the parallax. And this is coming from someone that disliked the XP Pen 15.6, which had a lot of parallax, and then ended up liking way more the 15.6 Pro that came after with no parallax. And then, now I'm using this thing that's basically a lesser XP Pen 15.6 Pro you might ask, why would I say that? Well, the screen, as far as the color accuracy, and even the parallax is better on the less expensive XP Pen 15.6 Pro. 
And that might lead you to question me. Hey Sigma, uh, why are you using a uh, inferior product? And that's when I tell you, it's because the pen is that good that I ended up not even caring about the parallax. I know, it's crazy. It's madness. So I didn't even mention what parallax was yet. Here's the general idea. You have a drawing surface. Let's say you put your pen on the top, but your cursor is actually at the bottom. There's a layer in between. So depending on the angle you're drawing at, there actually will be a sort of distortion in a way because there's a space in between. If you've ever used, let's say, a, a Samsung Galaxy device with an S Pen, there is zero parallax because those screens are crazy, crazy thin. So it appears as if your cursor and whatever you're drawing is directly underneath your pen's nib. That's the idea of parallax, or really, no parallax. Now, speaking of the pen in general, I honestly find the Wacom pen to be one of the best feeling pens out there. And it keeps getting better, honestly. Now, does that mean the XP pens don't feel good? No, they were great. They essentially mimicked the Wacom pens. But there's just something about the pens that feel great. And the Wacom pens have that eraser on the top. So if you enjoy that kind of thing, I just press E to erase. But if you think that's cool, there you go. It's a, an extra feature. Now for the big deal, honestly, and perhaps the deal breaker. This device is $649. That's honestly not something I think a beginner should be spending. It's good to dabble into digital art and such with the other devices like the XP pens, the Huayans, the Huans, Huayans, whatever that is. Those are very aptly priced. Not even that. For basically a third of the price, you could get a Wacom 1, which is a 13.3 inch drawing surface. And it's even compatible with things like a Chromebook and even a tablet. It's compatible with everything. And I think that makes drawing way more accessible. So good job Wacom. And honestly, good job XP Pen and the other guys because they're making things a lot more accessible. So does it warrant that price if you are, let's say, uh, a professional? Honestly, I'm even starting to feel like I need a bigger tablet. There's something about the size of your strokes that you, you kind of have to feel it as it happens. And eventually you feel like, you know, I could really use more screen space. And that's currently how I'm feeling. Do I regret this purchase though? No way. I love this thing. And I can honestly say it's the best drawing surface I have owned since like forever. But is going to be a kind of stupid to say, I just can't recommend it. There are better options out there. XP Pen put out their latest uh, X3 chip and that pen is really nice. And you could get a 22 inch XP pen tablet for less money than this one. At this point in time, there are better options. And who knows what Wacom's gonna make tomorrow. They just put out a $3,500 mega tablet, which looks absolutely awesome. But who is that even for? I can't afford that. That's like an animation studio or something. Regardless, XP Pen and the other guys are making just amazing things that we can actually afford. So if you want to stay in the Wacom camp, I would kind of more go with the Wacom 1 route. But if you really want to save money and get more, I do recommend to ditch Wacom for now and join in on the competitors. Until Wacom, of course, has a true answer for us mid-range price artists. 
So I don't know how you made it to the end, but thanks for watching. I hope this helped a little bit. If anything, I hope it kind of tells you not to buy it unless you really see a nice sale, because it'll be worth it on sale. Regardless, if you have any particular questions, please throw them in the comment section. I didn't even talk about the latency. Like, there's so many things we could go over, but this video's gone long enough, and I honestly got out what I really wanted to. But anyways, that's all I got for now. I'll catch y'all later.